Hi everyone, this is Teacher Jane of Teach Talk, where learning is fun and easy. If this is your first time watching our videos, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell button so you'll get notified on our next videos. Welcome to Shen Shumizu! Kung saan pag-uusapan natin ang mga science concepts from grade 7 to grade 12? Kasama ang topics in general science, biology, chemistry, physics, and earth science. At dito, Bida Ngagha! The circulatory system is the body system that transports nutrients, respiratory gases, and metabolic products throughout a living organism. And one of its major components is the blood. In today's Shansh Amazing episode, pag-uusapan natin ang tungkol sa circulatory system, specifically focusing sa blood. This organ system is responsible for sending the nutrients and oxygen to the different cells in the body. Ang focus ng video na ito ay ang blood o dugo. The blood is a body fluid in humans and other animals that delivers necessary substances such as nutrients and oxygen to the cells and transports metabolic wastes away from those cells. The blood has three main components the red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets, and blood plasma or simply plasma. Let's start with the red blood cells or red corpuscles. These are the components of the blood responsible for carrying oxygen into the cells of the different parts of the body. The red color of this cell is produced by hemoglobin. Anong hemoglobin? It is a protein rich in iron that carries oxygen throughout the body. Aside from that, the red blood cells also transport carbon dioxide from the different parts of the body back to the lungs to be exhaled out. The RBCs live for 120 days. All red blood cells are destroyed in the liver. Red blood cells are also called erythrocytes where erythro means red and cytes mean cells. Some other cells in the blood are the white blood cells or white corpuscles. These are the components of the blood that help the body in fighting infection. White blood cells are larger than the red blood cells but are fewer in number. There are many types or many kinds of white blood cells. We have neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, macrophages, and lymphocytes. The first type of WBCs in our list are the neutrophils. They are the most numerous of white blood cells. They destroy disease-causing bacteria by surrounding the bacteria and then digesting it. Neutrophils engulf bacteria and other microorganisms and microscopic particles. The granules of the neutrophil, which are the purple part in our illustration, are capable of digesting many types of cellular materials. Another type of WBCs are the eosinophils. They are involved in infections caused by parasitic worms. They release toxins to destroy these parasites. Aside from that, they are also involved in allergic reactions. Ano ang ginagawa ng eosinophil during allergic reactions? They release granule proteins, which are involved in the regulation of the body's immune response. Still under WBCs are the basophils. They help in the inflammation when a tissue is damaged. Ano ang inflammation? In simple words, Inflammation is the body's natural response to protect itself against harm. Common signs of inflammation are redness, warmth, swelling, and pain around the affected tissues. And inflammation usually occurs when the tissues are injured by bacteria, trauma, toxins, heat, 
or any other cause, including allergies. The basophils contain histamine and heparin, which are involved in allergies and blood clotting. Histamine promotes blood flow to the tissues, while heparin prevents blood from clotting too quickly. Another specific type of WBCs are the monocytes or macrophages. Bakit dalawa ang tawag sa kanila? Ano ang pinagkaiba ng monocytes at macrophages? Monocytes circulate in the bloodstream. When there is tissue damage or infection, the monocytes enter the affected tissue or organ and undergo a series of changes to become macrophages. These macrophages can modify themselves to form different structures in order to fight various different microbes and invaders. Monocytes are smaller compared to macrophages since macrophages comprise the largest white blood cells. They are involved in cleaning and digesting dead cells and debris. They bind foreign substances or microorganisms and help remove them from the body. If you have scratched your skin until it bled or if you have been wounded, you have probably seen a pus. It is a yellowish or greenish opaque liquid produced in infected tissues. However, these pus are actually dead white blood cells that were killed by the poison of disease-causing microorganisms. They may be yucky, but a pus is a common and normal byproduct of our body's natural response to infections. We have discussed two of the main compositions of blood. We are done with red blood cells and white blood cells. But together with white blood cells, we also have platelets. These are the smallest cells in the blood. If we put a red blood cell, a white blood cell, and a platelet side by side, the platelet is just this small. And just like the RBCs and WBCs, they are also formed in the bone marrow. Platelets are blood cells responsible for blood clotting. If a blood vessel wall becomes damaged, platelets rush to the site of injury and form a plug or clot to stop the bleeding. For example, if you accidentally cut your finger and rupture a blood vessel, it will start to bleed o magdudugo ito. In order to stop the bleeding, platelets within that broken vessel bind to the site of injury and send out chemical signals for more help. As the blood or wound dries, it forms the hard layer of scab. The last main composition of blood that we're going to discuss is the blood plasma or plasma. In our blood, there is about 55% plasma, 1% white blood cells and platelets, and 44% red blood cells. Plasma comprises the biggest part of our blood. This makes sense because it is the fluid substance of the blood. It is yellowish in color and contains many proteins needed by the body. Without these proteins, the body will not live. The plasma acts as a river where the red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets float. Before we have a short quiz, let's have a quick recap of what we have discussed in this amazing episode. Today, we talked about the circulatory system focusing on blood. We discussed about the blood composition, which are red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and plasma. It's good time! To check how much you have learned in this Shansha Amazing episode, we're going to have a short 3-minute quiz. After 3 minutes, we will check if your answers are correct. Let's start!
Let's check if your answers are correct. Number 1. It comprises 55% of the blood. If you can notice, it is more than half. It is the biggest part of our blood. This is of course the fluid portion or the blood plasma. Number 2. This specific blood cell lives for about 120 days. That's about 4 months. At ang sagot dito ay red blood cells. Number 3. These produce antibody molecules that can latch on and destroy invading viruses or bacteria. We have a keyword. The keyword is antibody or antibody molecules. What type of white blood cell releases antibodies? The answer is lymphocytes. Number four, colorless cell fragments in our blood that form clots and stop or prevent bleeding. Our key word here is the term clots. Clots are formed when there is a clot in the blood vessels, and these are created by the platelets. Item number 5, last number, a type of white blood cell that cleans the body of unwanted microscopic particles. Since it is a type of white blood cell, we can remove the answer white blood cells. We are left with eosinophil, neutrophil, and macrophages. From our discussion, we know that eosinophils specialize in parasites, neutrophils engulf bacteria and other foreign substances. And the type that cleans the unwanted particles are the biggest or the largest white blood cells, which are the macrophages. That's the end of our quiz. Please comment your score over 5 in the comment section below. That ends our Shansha Amazing episode for today. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video to your friends so that we can learn together. Bye!